Hi, I'm Scott Dietrich, Offensive Coordinator at Parkview Baptist High School in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. And I'm here today to share with you the third video in a series uh, on our combination triple option offense. In this particular video, we'll take a look at a very important component in a triple option offense, and that is the non-option running plays in your offense. Uh, non-option plays have, uh, for the entire nine years that we've been running, this style of offense at Parkview have always played a tremendous role in helping us to be able to move the football and be successful. I think some of the reasons uh, worth noting to run non-option plays, the first has to do with your quarterback. You know, when you, whether you're running triple option or double option plays, they are quarterback intensive plays. It's kind of like throwing a football. A lot of the weight, of the sh uh, weight is on the shoulders of the quarterback. So non-option plays takes a little pressure off your quarterback, especially if he's involved in game where he's physically getting tired, maybe physically he's beat up a little bit, uh, hand the football off or toss the ball to one of the other backs, excuse me, gives him a chance to take a playoff. Um, it also gets the other uh, players involved in the offense. Many times a slot option offense or triple option offense is a quarterback fullback game. Uh, whether it be midline or triple, those two players have the best chance of carrying the football. So your slots are doing a lot of blocking, a lot of uh, you know things related to help the offense, but they're not getting the football a lot. And so getting the slots to football in a non-option fashion can really help complement the option game. It slows down the defense and gives them a different rhythm. You know, option plays are great, the, but they really can't stand alone. Um, defense gets into the rhythm, even if early in the game you're really hurting them, they get into the rhythm and the flow of the option, and eventually they can start slowing you down. And that's when your, your non-option game can really kick in and help you. And, and it also adds a power and a counter element to the option. Uh, many times our triple option, our midline option, is a certain rhythm. Then we come back with some type of counteraction play or some type of play where we just come off and, and hit people in the mouth. So we have two, two main uh, things that we'll look at in our non-option game. The first is our isolation series in which we have basically five different plays all with very similar, almost identical blocking. And then we have a play that we call a rocket toss that has been really, really a tremendous complement to the offense. So hope you can get something from our double or excuse me, our non option plays. Okay, um, what we take a look now is, is a particular um, package in our non option running game and as a series we call our isolations. Uh, to put it Basically, an isolation play, as most of you guys know, is we're going to block down linemen on down linemen and isolate a linebacker with a back or with somebody pulling. Um, we've always liked isolation plays. They're just they're simple, sound, defensive-proof schemes that you see on all levels of football. Doesn't matter if it's on Friday night with high school, colleges on Saturday, pros on Sundays, you see teams running isolation plays. They're just too simple and they're too sound and too effective not to, and we've always had a lot of success. They're very adaptable with different backfield actions. Anytime you run a three back or really like I said, a four back offense, the amount of, of counter flow and different backfield actions that you incorporate is really, really tremendous and almost endless. So we feel like by, by mixing in different isolation backfield actions gives us a lot of flexibility. Some of the basics that we always tell our guys no matter what isolation play we're running. First of all, let's say we run an isolation play to this side. Whoever is isolating the linebacker, we want to hit him square. We want to hit him square with whatever he gives us. Whether it be a straight on block or an angle block, we want to take the biggest part of him and hit it square. We tell our backs, there's a lot of times you're going to isolate on one of these linebackers and they're going to be bigger than you. We don't expect you to knock them down, but all, the best thing you know we can hope for is a stalemate and we will live with a stalemate. The other thing we tell our backs is, whichever, whoever's running the football on isolation play, we always want to do what we call ABC running. We want to run from the A gap, B gap, to the C gap to outside. We want to give the A gap a chance. It's always easier for a back to run from inside out than it is to run from outside in. So whoever's getting the football on the isolation play, that is your initial aiming point. And it's important for the quarterback to be able to give you the A gap on any isolation play we run. And that's two components of our isolation game that, uh, that are very, very important. What I like to do is, is talk about, there's five isolation plays that we run. 
And the beauty of this is it's a different backfield action. The teams that, may, that we play may think it's a different play, but it's, a, it's one blocking scheme for our linemen. That's all it is. The backfield action is something the backs have to learn. As I take each isolation play, I will draw it up against a different defense so you see how our rules apply to the different defenses. Basically, our rule on isolation is Bob base. For us, that means on the play side, we're blocking the guard on the first down lineman, the tackle on the second down lineman, and from the center on back, we're basing, and the backs are going to isolate the linebacker or somebody else. If we're running, let's talk about our fullback ISO first. Okay, this is against a 3-3 defense. And in our first video, we talked in depth about how we count defenses. In a 3-3 defense, we actually count because there's only three down linemen. We say a 3-3 is like a 40 that's stacked up. We count the Mike linebacker as the first down lineman, even though he's a backer. He's zero. He's a second down lineman. This is the back or the linebacker that we're isolating. Tackle blocks out on two. Guard to Mike. From there, we base. He's got the zero defender. Guard first defender backside. Tackle second defender backside. Now, when we run 32, and what we call 32 and 33, our fullback ISO, our front side slot is going to isolate the linebacker. And if all possible, we want to isolate from this angle because that linebacker doesn't see it coming. Even if he starts creeping up, he doesn't see it coming. Now, what we do tell this slot, if he creeps up enough and tight enough where you feel like you can't get him, then we will creep if he creeps far enough. That's kind of a rule we tell him. He creeps, you creep. Otherwise, we want to get him from alignment. Our fullback is going to take a little jab step and then head for the A-gap. Our quarterback is going to reverse out and get the ball as deep as he possibly can to him. And then we'll fake keep or we'll fake drop back. But our fullback is going to run from the A-gap, the B-gap, the C-gap. Now, this is the only ISO that we'll tell the back, you can cut it back. Our fullback can cut this back. That's our fullback ISO. Inside runs, just like midline for our receivers against a one safety defense. I'm inside trying to get a hat on this rover or I climb to free safety. We love to get a hat on the free safety because we feel like these defenders out here have a hard time getting in there to the fullback. Okay? That's our fullback ISO against a 3-3 defense. Here's the backer. We always ISO the play side linebacker. Okay? Our next isolation that we'll look at is one of our counter isola isolation plays. Okay? That's the only full flow ISO we run. The next one is a counter isolation. It's a basically a slot counter. We're going to look at this against a 50 defense. Each time we'll talk about how the rules incorporate into each defense. Here's your 50. Okay, corner safety, safety corner. If we're going to always run it to the right, guard first down lineman, tackle second down lineman, base backside, zero, one, two. Now, a lot of teams may not like this matchup on this nose guard. All we got to do is take him where he wants to go. We don't have to, to knock him out. Counter ISO. It comes off our triple option look. Our slot's going to counter motion three steps. There's the backer. We're going to isolate him. Our fullback's going to fake combination triple option away. We're going to get a great fake. Our backside slot's going to drop step. On the second step, he's going to open, and he's going to try to get his shoulder square in that A-gap. Receivers against two safeties are both trying to get to the near safety. And this is our best opportunity to get, get safeties against two safeties because we have counteraction in the backfield, which tends to really freeze them. We really, really like this play. It's our counter, uh, slot counter ISO against a 50 defense. Another counter ISO uh, that we run is our quarterback counter ISO. We run this off a of midline. And I'll use another defense so you see... When we run our isolation play, guys, we run it against the defense they're in. Nothing takes us out of an isolation play. Okay, 5-1 defense. Now, anytime it's a 5-1 defense, there is the only linebacker in the box. That's who we're isolating. That's the only time one of our backs will isolate a middle linebacker. If we're going to run our quarterback counter isolation play to the right, there's one. There's two, base backside, just like that. 
All we do is we're going to open up, and we like this off a of midline. We're going to show midline to the fullback and let him hit it up in there, and hopefully that linebacker take him. Our slot may creep if he needs to, but he should have a good outside angle in trapping or, or isolating on that linebacker. Our quarterback is going to show midline fake away, and then he's going to pivot and find the running lane. Against one backside uh, slot is going to backside chase block, and we're trying to get to the middle safety with our ride outs if we can't block the rover. So that's our quarterback counter, midline counter ISO against the 5 1 defense. The next isolation we're going to look at is a counter trap against a 4 3. Now, as I said in uh, the first DVD, when we look at personnel, ideally we'd like our tackles to be a little more athletic than our guards. And one of the reasons is for pulling purposes. If we're going to run our counter trap ISO back to the right, again, we're trapping, that's our isolating backer. One with the guard, two with the tackle, base backside, zero, one. Now we're pulling the tackle so he's not involved in the count. All this is is an extension of our slot counter play where we're going to fake, triple option look this way, and we're going to pull the tackle now trying to trap the play side linebacker. His technique is to pull flat and turn up in the first crease past the center and don't wait for somebody better to block. Whoever shows up is the guy you need to block. The good thing we liked about this play is our backside slot goes in motion all the way over the top. So when you see this play on film, that is great flow. It looks like triple option. Backside slot's going to do the same technique he does on counter. He's going to drop step open, and he's going to hit in the first crease he can play side. Two safeties. We're trying to get in there with our wide outs. That is what we call our slot counter trap. Love it against a 4-3 defense. The last ISO we have is what we call gate. Good little play. We like it against a 40. And to be honest with you, right now, that's the only way we're running it. But it's a good 40 defensive play. Remember, 40 defense for us is a split middle. No zero defender. Okay, just like that. We run it away from the tight end, and we have to have a tight end in the game. For us, gate stands for guard and tight end pulling. That's what we say. We're going to run it back to the right. Isolation rules, one, two. Center now, base. There's no zero defender. Base takes him to going backside. Our guard is going to pull and look to trap the linebacker. Our tight end is going to pull, but we got to account for the defender's backside first. Our tackle is going to step down here, and between those two, we're going to try to handle those two. The good thing about it is we're getting great flow. Our tight end is going to pull, and that's another reason we like him in a two-point stance. He's going to pull, and he's going to look for this fall-in outside linebacker, which we call a rover in the 40 defense. We're going to fake to the fullback. He should check for that tight end, and we're going to get great flow over the top, triple option action, drop step open, get your shoulder square, inside run rules for him. That's our counter gate play. Again, we've only been able to make it uh, draw up sound against a 40 defense, but we really like the concept of pulling that tight end because a lot of people really can't key him coming across there. Okay, uh, to continue on our isolation series, let me address one problem that you may have. Um, we see a lot of eight-man front defenses on our schedule, and uh, these rovers, these outside linebackers slash safeties, which we call rovers because they're kind of a hybrid position, out of our A set, no matter what isolation play we run except for our gate play, he's really unaccounted for out of ace. So let's say we were running our our fullback isolation play over here. Blocking big on big, giving it to the fullback. We get it here, and let's say they really pinch it up and bounce the play out. We have an unblocked rover because even though we're coming inside with our receiver, our chances of cracking him are very slim. One adjustment we can make is using a tight end. Anytime we're having a fall-in problem with rovers in an eight-man front on any isolation play we run, except for gate, we will put a tight end in the game. It doesn't matter if it's tight end unbalanced or tight end with a split end backside. Because once we put a tight end in the game, his rule will take care of that rover. 
His rule on any isolation play is third down lineman or fourth defender. So in an eight-man front, that's going to take him out to the rover. Now we got a hat on the hat, and the obvious problem now is an unblocked corner. But if you think about it uh, in football sense, a rover is a heck of a lot better run player than a corner usually is. There's many times we'll give it off to this fullback in that corner. If he can make a play, we'll fall in there late and make a play for a substantial gain. But nothing changes on the backside, still basing, and he just gives us all the things we won't play side, a hat on the hat, especially on the front defenders. One thing I didn't mention going over the 32 and 33 play that I'll also mention now, another answer, let me redraw this 40 for you, another answer on, on this play, can't do it on the other ones because of backfield action, but when we're running our, our fullback isolation play, against an eight-man front, doesn't matter which one, 3-3 three, three or 5-1. If we don't want to use a tight end, what we can use is what we call quick motion. We'll take a backside slot, and we will, right before the snap, you'll see him buzz over there really fast. He'll turn up and isolate, similar to what we did on midline. He'll block out on the rover, and now we got the same thing we have with a tight end. We got a hat on a hat, and you have an unblocked defender with the free. But again, we consider that a secondary defender. So that gives you two ways to account for an unblocked rover and eight-man front on your isolation plays. Okay, now let's, let's go to the video and take a look at uh, several different isolation plays, and we'll kind of go in the same order as we did on the board. We'll start with our fullback isolation, our counter isolation, our quarterback, and then our trap and our gate play. Uh, look at them against the defense, uh, different defenses we like to run them against. Again, we like to run these plays against everything. First play we have up, we're in a tight end left with a split end right. This is a 40 defense, and we're going to run our fullback isolation to the left. And right off the bat, you see the what-if problem of a rover who's in a position to fall inside or, or fit outside. And we have a tight end because we expected that, and you'll see a good look at getting a hat on a hat. And you see the unblocked defender, number five. That's why we don't mind turning the corner loose. He, they're not good at sticking their nose in there against that kind of formation. They may be up there, but when it comes time to making a tackle, uh, make them make a tackle. Fullback does a good job of running with his eyes and ends up hitting in a C gap. It's A, B, C running. This is also against a 40 defense, and we're going to use our little quick motion. This is really good to do away from a tight end against an eight-man front because they're probably going to declare their front to the tight end, and when you quick motion, you get a little better blocking angles with the ISO away from the tight end. One-two blocking, motion slots on the ISO. Slot now has a hat on the rover. Quarterback get it to him deep. Fullback run with your eyes. He ends up in the C-gap again. Free safety's got to make the tackle. Okay. Uh, another split defense, we're going to run it down here with, with our big backs. We call those guys nasty backs because they mix it up in there and they, they get nasty. But uh, there is no defined rover, so our outside slot's fitting in there and he's going downfield to get him. But you can see that there's nothing fancy about this. It's a simple play, really, really productive for us. Okay, this is out of ace against a 50 defense. You can see we're going to 1-2, isolate the linebacker. Uh, let, me, let me say this on the back side because what's happening here. Our linemen need to understand this is our only full flow isolation play. So if there's a backside linebacker that's in a position that's hard to get, counter flow is not going to hold him. Then we need to zone that backside so we can get a hat on him. Fullback does a good job of getting himself square up in that A-gap, which is exactly what we want, the quarterback getting the ball deep to him. That's really, really what we want. This is our two tight ends set against a 40 defense. Eight-man front, one, two. Tight end's got the rover. Center's going backside backer. And again, you look and see the unblocked defender is going to be this corner. And the free safety trying to play it from inside out. We'll take that matchup all day long if a cornerback wants to come in there and tackle our fullback. It's against a 5-1 defense out of ace. Our slot's going to try to fold in there and get to that mic. Um, I put this in here to show you that this can be a cutback play. If you get that ball to that fullback deep enough and he's right behind the quarterback, 
he can he can cut it backside a gap, and he does right there, and that's a good example of what we we uh, we don't overcoach him to do it. We just tell him A B C be alive for the cutback. This is out of two tights, okay? And we're going to use our quick motion. Quick motion is going to isolate the mic backer in a 5-1, and then our tight end and our um, tackle are going to take care of the second down lineman and the rover. Almost gets it in the end zone. Show you from the um, end zone here. One thing uh, I do need to tell you, anytime the second down lineman and then the force defender are stacked, what could happen is if, if that tackle goes out to second down line and that rover goes out, he may be unblocked. We do a little you-me block right here where that tackle and tight end both step into him and one of them comes off on that, that rover. Otherwise, he could be unblocked in the hole. And you can see the tackle is, ends up coming off of him there and does a good job. Okay, 50 defense. Now we're going to get to our counter isolation play. This is our 22 uh, counter uh, off a of triple option action. We're in two tight ends set, which again, all you got to do is apply your rule. First, second down lineman, third down lineman, or force. So our tight end should be blocking out there. They end up switch blocking it because of where the uh, corner rovers is, rover is. But isolate, there's our backer. Watch the slot stick it and go find him. Believe me, if you have trouble finding the linebacker on isolation play, you're having a good play. I can promise you that. Here's counter isolation down here against the 50. There's our ISO. Great example of one, two, three blocking. One, two, three out to force. ISO on the backer. One unblocked defender. You're going to have a good play. Now run a counter ISO to the top. Now, this is not the motion we want, I'll be honest with you. We were playing inside first time, and the noise, you just couldn't hear. So we left. I told them to leave early in case we, you know, until we get to where we need to be. But ideally, we want our motion short and quick. But what I like about this play, and I'll show you from the end zone, is how that slot gets his shoulder square back in the A-gap. And plus, we have a, a good crack block by the wideout. Wideout's coming on here. See that wide out? He's coming in here to get the safety, and we end up turning the corner loose. Again, your corners are going to be your weakest tacklers. Make your corners make plays on inside runs if you can. Those guys don't like to make tackles um, between the tackles. If you can force them to, you're going to pop some. But watch our slot right here. It gets his shoulders back square in that A-gap, and ideally that's what we want. The one disadvantage of a slot position is a downhill play sometimes for those slots. So anything you can do to help them and uh, overcoach that. Here's our counter trap. We're going to run our counter trap isolation back this way. We love it against a 4-3. We're going to pull the backside tackle, get flow over the top. Watch the middle linebacker. We're looking for counter flow. Middle linebacker stepping to the track of that fullback. Tackle fits right for that linebacker. Slot does a great job of getting the shoulder square into that A-gap. This is our counter trap against a 5-1 defense. Now against a 5-1 defense, we really are trapping the linebacker. We're kind of hoping the Mike linebacker flows himself out of there and we can trap that rover. Because when our tackle pulls, he's just going to turn up for the first unblocked defender that shows up. So ideally, we're going one, two. Hopefully, we get him flowing and we can trap the mic. He does a pretty good job of reading, but the ball ends up bouncing anyway. So the tackle really is getting to the rover, but there's just not a good running lane in there, so the slot does a good job. ABC, watch his steps drop open, get square, dips in and out. That's a that's good move. Running with his eyes, taking the hole that's there. ABC running. All right, here's our gate play. Here's our counter gate play. We run again off again, uh, away from a tight end. That's why we have him up because we pull him sometimes. Big on big blocking. We're going to trap the backer. Tight end's looking for that rover. You can see he's even peeking over there. He knows who he's looking for. Get to the backer. Get to the rover. Nah, that's a pretty good look right there. 
Same play down here. Pull tackle, pull guard. Now the guard's bad right here because he doesn't turn up. He's getting confused. He thinks he's the, the trapping the rover. He ought to be turning up for linebacker, and we want that tight end looking for that rover. But you can see just the flow of the play, if you just look at those linebackers, you know, they're two and three gaps across the ball with the slot coming in behind them. Got a chance for a nice play. Simple play again. I think it draws up good against the 40. I'm not sure about it, about everything else. Last thing we'll look at is our quarterback midline counter. Kind of looks like our midline counter option that we ran and uh, looked at in video two. But it's a quarterback run all the way. Same ISO rules, fake midline. You can see, you know, people are just, when you're fullback, is always a threat. They're going to overkey to him. Just an easy, easy football play that comes out the back door off that midline. This is a 4-3 defense, just the middle backer walked up. 1-2-3 blocking. Safety makes a good tackle. We still gain some yards. Now this is a wide copy. I do have an end zone. It's a 40 defense. Uh, again, when two types was a set that we ran a lot this year. And you can look. That's just 11 on 11 right there. But if you can get a hat on the hat and block everybody, the only guy we don't block is the corner. And look, he misses the tackle. How many times you see a corner miss a tackle? They're just not, they're just not uh, what they do all day long. They cover people. But when they play us, they have to, to be able to tackle sometimes. We're running back this way against a 40. One, two, out on force. ISO, turn the corner loose. We don't mind doing that because of matchup. Feel like, um, again, your fullback, your corner, your slots, I mean, your fullback, your quarterback, your slots, you feel like you're pretty good on matching them up against, against the uh, thing. So that's our isolation series. Again, guys, it's been a great compliment to our option game. It gets our slots involved as well as give us a power and counter element to our offense. Okay, continuing with our non-option running game. Uh, after the isolation series, we're going to take a look at a single play that uh, has really added a great dimension to our offense. We call it the rocket toss. That's what most teams that, that run it do call it. Uh, for us, it's 28-29. This is a play that just takes the ball outside as fast as anything you'll see. It, uh, it really complements our option game and all of our running game because you know, regardless of if you're running from B-gap to B-gap a lot of times like we are, you're going to see a lot of B-gap to B-gap. Pressure, stunts, penetration, that sort of thing. So this play takes the ball outside. It gets the slots involved, uh, who tend to be your speedier backs anyway, and really gets the play outside. Uh, the whole concept of the play is timing because we tell our guys we're trying to outrun the defense. This is not a typical toss play in which you're pulling linemen and uh, leading with the fullback. Uh, I hear a lot of coaches talk about this play and talk about pulling the guard. To me, if you're timing this play like you're supposed to be, to be, anybody but your tackle is going to be ineffective on the play. Everything starts with our timing. We're going to take our slot and we're going to leave it in motion. We tie it to our snap count to where he's about to the fullback when that ball is snapped. So he's got to go just a hair behind the fullback. Then he wants to flatten out to the sideline and get his eyes back inside for the quarterback. Quarterback is going to reverse past 6 o'clock. He's got to be flexible in his hips. He wants to, to drive off of this right foot pivot, and he has got to get himself almost 180 degrees the other way or maybe further. And we want to dead toss this firm and flat to that slot, and we don't want to make him slow down for it. Do not pitch the ball on his back hip because his timing and the speed of the play is critical. We should catch this ball in the C gap or wider without it being too much. If you try to toss it way out here, of course, your quarterback can't get it there. So the C to D gap tends to be ideal. That is the timing of the play. And if you look at it from this standpoint, if you have a slot back on a dead sprint catching the ball here, you really shouldn't have to block anybody there to have a good play. Very simple, simple rules. That's one of the things we love about this play. It's a tremendously simple play. It's a play that we do not have to, to uh, rep a lot. It's very, very simple. It's easy and fast. We always stalk the corner. We don't get into any type of crack or switch games. 
we always arc the slot. Okay, in the eight-man front, I'll show it to you against the seven-man front also. The, the rover is the force defender that we arc on. Now, when our slot comes to the line of scrimmage, he is going to give this tackle a one or a two call every time we run this play because it's going to help us to know for that tackle. If that tackle, when that slot gets to the line of scrimmage, he's going to find the man on the tackle, and he's going to count defenders outside not counting the corner. If there is just one defender, he's going to make a one call. And what that one call tells our tackle is he's going to pull and then he's going to run the alley and get his eyes back inside. Maybe for an extremely fast linebacker, but preferably the free safety. We tell this tackle, you're going to run this alley, you're going to pull, and that's why you want a more athletic tackle in this offense because of this play. You want to pull and you want to get your eyes in the alley. Be ready to block the backer, but don't wait on him. Okay, that is the three. That's the two guys, the two and a half guys we got to block. Now, one thing to help you tackle is take a little weight off your hands. Don't make it obvious to where you can get out of your stance fast. Everybody else on the offensive line is going to do the same thing. They're going to cross the next gap and climb. They're going to try to cross the next gap and climb, cross and climb. We don't want to get hung up on all defensive linemen. Sometimes they will. A coaching point on this, our backside guard and our, and our center need to make sure they stay flat across their gaps because when your quarterback turns to toss it, if this guard does not cross this defensive lineman's face, he can hit him from behind. So if, if, if they do nothing else but just getting these guys ways, they've done a good job. Our fullback is always going backside edge to set up a naked pass that we run off of a little bootleg, which we won't talk about, but it's pretty simple play. Backside is cut off. Flat and dead toss with the quarterback, and then we're going to fake naked plat, uh, bootleg away. That is a one call. That is a one call against a 40 defense. Now next, I want to take a look against a two call or a seven-man front. Your eight-man front is almost always going to be a one call. Against a 4-3 defense, and we like this play out of ace. We will run it out of other formations, but we love it out of ace. And I'll show you why. Anytime we're in a balance set like this, we feel like we can go to the best side with the play. If we got rocket toss called to the right and this defense is expanded and on this side they're reduced, that's a better edge to run the play. So we will check it and we will call it to the best side. But let's say they're balanced and there's no uh, obvious advantage. Always a stalk. Now, we're going to get a call right here. We're going to find the man on the tackle. Count defenders. One, two. We're going to get a two call on this play. When we get a two call, what that tells our tackle, now if you've got to pull, we're going to pull, we've got to account for those two defenders. There's no more run in the alley because there's two unblocked cats out here that we've got to block. We don't tell them who to block. We tell them to take them like they come. We always want to be heavy of the, of the guy closest to the line of scrimmage. And I tell him this, if this safety plays deep and he comes up and we both block him, we're at least thinking right. Obviously, we would want him on him and him on the safety. But you never know. The backer may try to contain and the safety may come in here. We want the slot to get the arc to the widest guy and we want our tackle to pull to the next inside guy. Everybody else is going to try to pull, cross, and climb. Cross and climb. The motion of the play doesn't change. And looking at this motion, a good coaching point to remember for your slot is once he crosses that fullback is to flatten out. We want him parallel to line of scrimmage. If he starts downhill, it gets really hairy in there. Okay, a lot of penetration. Catch it and stretch it. Take the running alleys. Backside, fake and neck it, cross field block. The key to this play is timing on the rocket toss. One call or two call has really made things simple on the edge for us in terms of what the tackle should do. But everybody else is crossing gaps and climbing. Very, very simple play. We rep it a couple of times a day just to keep the timing down, and that's about it. Okay, continuing with our rocket toss, let me discuss with you just a couple of problems that you might have uh, against certain looks. Uh, first of all, as far as a one-call problem, when we see a 3-3 front, 
it, it should be a one call for us because even if they're stacked, one defender, one defender outside. But what can happen a lot of times when we go to Ark and he stalks and he pulls for the alley is this linebacker is so wide that, you know, if he sees the play pretty good, uh, he can force a block by this tackle. Even if we get a block now, this whole time, one downside to this play is your motion is early. you got to be early to get it to where you want the play to be taught, uh, caught, the pitch. This free safety, if he's a player, he's going to be coming down in the alley. And he might be coming down there hitting your pitch back for a very short, minimal gain. So one thing we can do to make this uh, play go is a formation adjustment. We'll take our split in and we'll bring him over. Again, eight-man fronts like to be an eight-man front so that they can have those eight guys up there. They don't like to do a lot of adjusting, at least not the ones we see. So by getting an extra blocker, even if they cheat the free safety over, we still have a hat for everybody. Okay, and one thing, a couple of things we can do. Now we can pull our tackle and we'll block the linebacker like he wants us to do. And we can play a little switch game between these two guys. Either we can crack and switch to the free, or we can climb to the free and still arc this rover. Either way, now we got everybody blocked, and we always have to be able to outrun this defensive end because our guard is going to try to cross his face. Now, while we're in this formation, let me mention this. If they really start rolling to that unbalanced set, just like we talked about on the combination triple option, we always are looking back to the nub to see what we have. Away from unbalanced. If they roll that secondary and they leave one support defender over here, we feel like all we got to do is make one block and have a good play with a lot of field to work with. So as compared to three blocks, we make one block. If the nub rule, they leave one support back over there. Now on a two call, on a two call, you could have the same problem a different nature on the edge. Let's say we're going against a 50 defense out of ace. Corner, safety. Now we have a two call, okay, to both sides. One, two. Well, we're, we're going to try to pull and occupy those two defenders with a stalk block. Ideally, we want him on him and him on the safety. If this end is really good and he's recognizing the toss and he's stretching out there, and he's supporting and we don't have much of a running lane, what we can do, again, is make a formation adjustment. To, so that's not such an out leverage block for our tackle, is we'll put a tight end in here. We'll go unbalanced with a tight end. Now that tight end has a lot better angle, and he's still going to pull like the tackle. And we go ahead and make a one call with him. We arc to this safety because they'll probably invert down to cover three and look like this. Now we'll make a one call, we'll arc, and now he'll play the tackle's game of pulling in the alley. The only thing we tell this tight end is you're a gap wider than that tackle, so if this end is stretching at all, lock on him and stay on him. Again, it's an unbalanced set, so we're always looking for the possibility of being able to run the play to the nub. But that's two, uh, two things that we'll do uh, on a one call and a two call to still be able to get the edge if they're out leveraging us by alignment or by the way they're, they're fitting on the perimeter. Okay, let's go to the video now and take a look at our rocket toss in action uh, against a variety of defenses where we have both a one call and a two call uh, and several different formation looks. Okay, uh, we really like to play out of ace as much as possible. Here's a 3-3 defense. Now, the tackle's pulling. And he's really selling out to the linebacker just because he's wide, uh, which is not a bad thing to do to make sure. But you know, ideally, we really want that tackle to pull flatter and make that uh, linebacker scrape and show he can make a play. Now, we're in unbalance at the top, and we feel like we only have one support defender down here, so that's our nub rule kicking in. And I'll show you how it looks from a wide angle. We always are looking for that. Okay. Again, we're unbalanced out here. They're disregarding him, obviously, because he's ineligible. But this corner has rolled back enough over the ball to where we feel like one support, and he is a cornerback. Again, we don't mind turning him loose. But we're going to play the same game in here. We're going to pull, probably block this backer because he's wide, and arc the, the uh, rover there. Okay. 
I'd like to see our quarterback reverse out a little past that, get that ball out there a little faster, a little firmer. Not too bad. Good arc block. Got to be willing to run into the boundary in this offense, guys. You really do because sometimes teams will force you there. Catch it. Stretch it. Set up your arc block. Good job of sideline running. Good extra effort. Again, you can just see, I mean, that's a 12-yard gain. Just an easy, easy play. Now, I will say this. This is a 5-1 defense with the Rovers inside the box. Anytime somebody's playing this front on you, run the rocket toss. Run it until they get out of it because it's going to be hard for them to stop because they're forced defenders playing inside. I mean, you can see we're having to wait on the forced defender there. We've almost got to a point to where we uh, – We'll look at that one again. We almost got to the point where we check rocket toss against a 5-1 with the Rovers inside there. Ian does a good job of keeping our tackle out of the alley, but the timing of the play is still good. 40 defense out of ace. Going to be coming down here with it. We see a lot of tight Rovers. Okay, that's, this is a good problem to have. The Rover is so tight that when our tackle goes and pulls the alley, he actually crosses the rover's face, which should allow our slot to almost get the free safety, which he's looking for. We tell our tackle, once you do cross a guy like that's face, stay with him. Now, you wouldn't think rocket toss would be a good play out of two tights, but the more those teams reduce, the better it can be. I'll show you from a wide angle just to show you how compressed. Whenever they get compressed enough, They've taken this rover and walked him over the tight end. The corner's out here. We're going to ask our tight end now to zone this rover. We're going to arc the corner. Our tackle actually gets out in the alley to the free safety. Timing doesn't change. It's just a, a set that you wouldn't think you'd be able to run this play, but you can. Our, our tight end could do a better job of just turning and pulling. That's the thing you want your tackle and tight end to do is turn their shoulders and run. We would rather them run and, and never really turn and block the guy, just get between him and the ball. Now, here's that scenario we talked about on what if. 3-3 three, three defense with a wide backer who's getting out there in the free safety run alley. So we get our unbalanced set. Now we got a good crack opportunity. We crack and we arc to the free safety. We get a big play. So play against what the defense and then tackle ends up on the backer right there. Arc to the, uh, to the free safety. Really can't see it. Uh, wish you could see it a little better to the near side there. But, again, good effort. Look at the red shirts getting downfield. Once those linemen turn and cross the gap, they ought to climb, keep playing football. Um, not a good decision to block behind the ball there, which is something you never want to do. Okay, again, out of two tights. Again, when we have a tight end, he's going to give tight end now a one or two call. You see, that, that, that's what we want our tight end to do. We don't want to sit there and wait and see who to block. We want to turn and pull and figure out who to block on the run because they're the one that's got to make the commitment to get to the football. Really simple, fast play, gets outside quick. Again, another 5-1 defense. We got a good end zone of this. thing about this play, if you look at it, it, there's really nothing pretty about that. There's just a lot of bodies there, but you look up and you've gained seven or eight yards. If the timing is there, you can get good plays with this very easily. And that's exactly what happens there. Big first down in that game. Okay, two tights again. We're going to run the rocket to the field. Again, we got three defenders. We looked out leverage, but everybody takes good angles. Tight end pulls, we arc the next guy, and our tackle ends up running the alley. If everybody will just pull like they're supposed to be and take it like it comes, usually you'll, have, uh, you'll get the guys because they're going to show up to fit where the football is. Here's a nub rule. What's happening here is an eight-man front 40 defense. We're in our end over, and they take this corner, and they're going to roll him over the ball. Anytime they do that, we're looking back to our nub. One support defender, we want to go there. And we want to make that corner have to come down there and make the play. That's a corner, not a free safety, and that's what we like about it. Last one out of ace, 
show you a good example of arc rock, uh, the rover playing arc good and cutting up inside. Anytime you can't get him reached, kick him right there. Now that defensive end is getting awfully close to us. We really don't want that guard to, we would really rather that guard just turn up on him if he's that wide. But uh, again, the timing of the play has allowed us to get in there. But that's a good kick out block by the slot on a hard pressing rover. Guys, that's it for our, our non-option run game. That's not all the plays we run as non-options, but that's the majority of them. The isolation series is, uh, is almost an offense within, within itself, and our rocket toss has been a tremendous complement. I think the, the mix between our combination triple option, our double options, our non-option run game gives you a complete running package that uh, is very, very effective, and you can coach your players on what to do. I think the, the limit of what you can do with a four-back offense as far as backfield actions and combinations of pulling linemen and leading backs is almost endless. Uh, I think the trick is to find what works for you and what complements your, your offense as a whole. So I really hope that you got something beneficial from this video, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch it. Thank you.